you have been talking about te te technology open solutions already before. And you've been talking about hydrogen already before. And indeed, hydrogen is a really interesting point when it comes to energy storage, but as well when it comes to mobility. A combustion engine, for example, is neither good or bad. It just depends on what you burn in it. Still, we have, today, still we don't have a hydrogen strategy. So my question is, will you work on a hydrogen strategy and what's your time schedule? And when do you expect it to be effective in terms of CO2 reduction? I will certainly work on a hydrogen strategy because I also believe Europe can really lead on this because uh, I think we, we, can, we still have an advantage vis-a-vis uh, -vis other parts of the world if we speed it up. I also believe because hydrogen, you have no energy loss when you store energy in hydrogen. You also, you know, just if, in my dreams, I would create a, a, a partnership with Africa, especially North Africa, and we would help install huge capacity of solar energy in Africa and transform that energy into hydrogen and then transport that hydrogen to other parts of the world and Europe through existing means we already have. It is not that difficult to change the pipelines where you now use for gas into hydrogen. It's not that difficult to use LNG terminals for hydrogen. This is my dream of the future energy because let's not kid ourselves. If we don't incorporate perspective for North Africa or Africa in all of this, uh, we will be weakened uh, from that side as well. So, uh, hydrogen, I think, could be a huge opportunity for our economy. You know, if, if people in the steel industry are already saying now, we could create a situation where hydrogen could be the fuel to have a competitive steel industry, I think th these are huge opportunities uh, we should try and use to the uh, uh, maximum uh, of possible. As global economic growth continues, supplying the world with clean energy is becoming increasingly important. Through current advances in technology, hydrogen is maturing into a cost-efficient energy carrier. Combined with recent developments in floating wind technology, this creates new opportunities for a fully renewable solution from creation to consumption. Offshore hydrogen production provides flexibility and grid independence. Utilizing abundant wind and water resources reduces the need for land infrastructure and relieves stress from urban areas. This concept uses floating wind turbines to power an offshore platform where seawater is purified and distributed to electrolyzers, producing hydrogen. The finished product is compressed and stored before being offloaded via a buoy system to a transportation vessel. This allows flexible distribution directly to market. By 2030, applications for hydrogen are numerous in both residential and commercial sectors. Its high energy density makes it ideal for fueling cars, as well as heavy land and sea transportation resulting in improved local air quality and reduction of global CO2 emissions. With offshore hydrogen production, we are transforming the ocean's wind and water resources into clean and cost-efficient energy. By introducing this complete value chain of renewable energy, we take a major step toward a low-carbon society.
A human being can survive three days without water. Here, it's only 14 hours. Go team. Your last moments in civilization, how you feeling? <laughs> Today, we are going to travel through the wilds of Death Valley, surviving only on the water produced by our car. The F-cell engine runs on compressed hydrogen, its only emission, water vapor. We attached a tank to the car to collect its emissions. This is all our water for the next two days. Okay, last water. The ultimate test for Diane and Joshua and for the future of emission-free mobility. Explore the Death Valley. Oh, it is hot. Yeah. Three hours after they started, the moment of truth. Is it really possible to drink a car's emissions? Heads it is. These were the last moments of that Kruger. It looks like water. Give it a sniff. Here it goes. Everybody says? That's totally fine. Really? Yep. We're saved! That's wild. <laughs> That's crazy. Our car makes water. <laughs> Drive around and make some water? Take a shower? That was sort of anticlimactic. I was expecting drama or death on the sideway. I don't know. Wait for me! <laughs> that has absolutely no taste. <laughs> After two days and 21 liters of emissions consumed, the most unusual car test came to a happy end. To surviving Death Valley. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to get like power windows, leather seats, and a water pump, but the technology is there. Yes.